Hello, everyone. Dr. Vicki here speaking to you from the Seed of Transformation Healing Center. It is time for tower scopes again. We're going to be doing the tower scopes for the sign of Taurus. That's Taurus Sun, Taurus Moon, Taurus Rising for the month of June 2024. Now, before we get into the um, tarot part of the tower scope, let's talk a little astrology. Um, so, Taurus, Jupiter has moved out of your sign. <laughs> that happens uh, at the end of May. And, uh, you know, Jupiter was in there for a year. Jupiter moving through Taurus really uh, expanded your sense of self and sort of to put yourself out there to stand up for uh, what you uh, know to be true about yourself. However, when, when Jupiter moves through this first house, sometimes it can sort of increase the girth of things. And so that's done. And now it's in the second house which is the natural house for Taurus, and that is the money house. And so as Jupiter moves through Taurus, I mean, moves through Taurus's second house as it moves through Gemini, um, there can be an expansion of resources. And some of those resources come through communication because that's really what, what uh, Gemini is about. So we do have a new moon in Gemini on the 6th. So that is planting new seeds. If there's a, a project or perhaps a business that you wanted to like bring in, especially if it had to do with communication um, or uh, you know anything to do with details or things like that, um, it would be a good time to, to sort of initiate something at that time. There's a lot of energy in... Um, uh, in Gemini, besides um, besides Jupiter, we have the Sun there. We have Venus there. We're going to have Mercury there. Jupiter and Mercury make a conjunction in Gemini as well. So there's a lot of energy for that. Now, we also have uh, all the planets moving into Gemini, making trines to Pluto in Aquarius. Now, Pluto in Aquarius is up in that tenth house. And so this, there's a flow from the 10th house, which is your public standing and your career into your second house of money. So this is an opportunity where you can bring some resources in uh, to yourself um, and, you know, benefit from all your hard work. <laughs> uh, the sun then moves into cancer on the 20th. And then the next day it makes, a, it, we have a full moon in the sign of Capricorn. The cancer Capricorn axis is your axis of the mind. And um, there is a question of how secure you are in your thoughts and uh, your beliefs. Uh, but there's an illumination around those. And, you know, an illumination to evaluate and see if those things still work for you or they don't work for you. Um, then the sun in Cancer, Mercury in Cancer, Venus in Cancer. There's a lot of energy in that third house, which is the house of the mind and also the house of siblings. So you might find yourself hanging out with your siblings, which happens in the summer, even in the busiest of lives, people have family vacations. This might be a time that you you want to do something like that. Um, so, so there's a lot of energy for that as well towards the end of the month. Um, Venus, the planet that rules you, goes from um, Gemini into Cancer, from that second and third house. So, so your social engagements will probably be with uh locally there's like a, there's a local energy to that and uh, hopefully you won't be too busy making money <laughs> not to have some fun all right so um let's so that's what i want to say about uh the astrology if you want more specifics on the astrology you can always check out my astrology of june uh i do an, a, a numerology kabbalah uh, reading for June, that's about 20 minutes, you know, depending, I try to keep it down so it's not too overwhelming because the Kabbalah can be a little bit, I am going to start an introduction to Kabbalah class, so if you're interested in that, drop me a note, I'll make all those announcements at the end, um, and let's see, what else, what else, what else, um, what else, anyway, um, so let's do the reading. We're going to be using, I, I lost my train of thought. I apologize. We're going to be using the, um, 
Illuminated Earth Oracle, which is actually not a tarot deck, but uh, it's you can read it like one. So, uh, and of course, you know, Earth sign. Oh, Uranus is still in your sign, by the way. That's not moving out till next year. So you still have another uh, a good amount of time with Uranus in your sign. So shaking it, the shaking things up, shake it up. Do, do shake it up. <laughs> we start with gifts. Gifts. This speaks to us of both giving and receiving gifts, but this really, I think, is the gifts that you have, your talents, your abilities, your giftedness, right? That, so that's the front and center. Let's see what's challenging that. Oh, grief, yeah. You know, it's easy enough to get caught up in the grief of a situation, whether it's your own personal grief, and that may, be, may, may apply to you, and, I, and my condolences if it does. Um, but sometimes the loss overwhelms the sense of what we need to be grateful for. And so whether it's a personal experience for you or, or more meta experience for you, a metaphysical experience as you watch people, uh, suffering, uh, needlessly starving needlessly, um, <clears throat> it can, can actually get in the way of remembering just uh you know the gifts that you have let's see what's at the root of this the path of peace the path of peace you want peace you know taurus loves peace taurus is a venus rule sign venus loves relationship and cooperation and sharing the beauty and the love um you know it's 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 aspirational and so at the root of things is you, you want to see peace. You want to have peace inside. And in the peace inside, you want to see it reflected out. But really the only way to do that is to have peace inside. And sometimes it's really hard to have peace when you see things going on in the world. In the past, we have the underworld. So you have had to really dig deep. There's been a lot of... Um, uh, introspection you spent a lot of time in introspection in the past or in the recent past um really sort of getting down to the bottom of things um so to speak and a journey in the underworld it really ends up being a journey to find the riches and the gifts that lie within the underworld right when you think about the earth herself and all the beauty that she has uh, inside of her, whether it be crystals or, you know, metals or, you know, whatever it is, you have to dig for it. You have to get your hands dirty. You have to exert yourself. You have to dig, dig, dig until you find the treasure. And uh, you've been doing a lot of digging. And of course, having Uranus in your sign, disrupting everything all the time requires you to do that. In the sky, we have the cosmos. So this is a, a, a a, rem a remembering or a reminder to you that we are all connected and that because of that, when you need help, you can ask for it. Uh, when help is, when you want to help, you just have to say, who can I help? And the person will come to you. So depending on what side, whether you need it or whether you want to give it, uh, all you have to do is call it in. The universe, the cosmos, the cosmos are listening. In the immediate future, we have the multiverse. Well, isn't that the cosmos listening, right? So there's many, many uh, different lifetimes, experiences um, um, in different vibrational states. Uh, things are all happening at the same time, really. That's something that the physicists have, have uh, let us know, uh, actually, through their experimentation. And so we have access not just to this world, but to many worlds and to many levels. But you have to be able to communicate and 
and and and raise your vibration to a state where you can communicate with that. And I think with Uranus, you are suddenly waking up to um, really things that have been hidden, things that have been hidden to them. And uh, boy, let me tell you, when a Taurus gets gets a task to do, there is very little you can dissuade them from. So thank you, Tauruses, for waking up just in time. How people see you, how people on the outside see you, we have harmony. So they see you as beautiful, harmonious. We have all the colors of the rainbow here. Um, they see the beauty within you. They see the beauty within you and on the outside of you. It's not just, you know, if you're beautiful on the inside, it shines on the outside. You can be ugly on the inside and you can put a facade of you. But true beauty goes, comes from inside out, right? And people see that in you. It's not a facade. In a domestic situation, potential. Potential for things to grow, for things to manifest, to create a new world, right? To get out of the grief cycle of watching suffering. Why do we need to suffer? We don't need to suffer. We have the technology. We have the know-how. Know uh, and we have each other. Hopes and fears. Resilience. You hope you can be resilient. Come on, Taurus. You're a Taurus. Of course you're resilient. Resilient. Persistent. Slow and steady. Taurus. You got it. You got it. Relationship relationship now relationship is like oh it's relationship it's great but we can see that these two rocks are hitting each other can you see that so this is about relating to other people so relationship becomes a big uh a big um like being able to to talk to each other and perhaps that's part of the gemini energy jupiter and gemini you know two sides of something becoming aware of both sides of an argument Becoming both becoming aware of both sides of a thing so that you can understand it better and make a choice around it, right? Okay, so there are no major arcanas in here, so I'm just going to pull out from what's underneath. We have obstacle, that's the big rock right there. Some people might say that that's Taurus, but I wouldn't say that. Ah, reincarnation. So this is about the continuity of our experience and connection. If you are feeling blocks, you need to remember that this is just a temporary situation, that, that, that there is a path. And, and of course, labyrinths always are the path within and that there is a connection. As above, so below, you are connected. So if you are feeling blocked, and if it's this grief that is blocking you, know that you do not need to be blocked. You just need to ask for help. And that help doesn't have to come from a person if you're not comfortable with that, but it certainly can come from spirit. Or it could come from a person as well. Sometimes we ask spirit for help and a person comes in, right? There's that old joke about the guy uh, who's in the flood and he's on his, his roof and a guy in a rowboat comes and says, he says, come on, I'll save you. And he's like, oh, no, I'm waiting for the Lord. I'm waiting for the Lord. And then they they send a helicopter and the guy comes in the helicopter and he says, come on, let's go. And he's like, no, no, I'm, I'm going to save the Lord. The Lord is going to save me. And then the guy gets swept away in the, and there's another one, I think. The guy comes to the door and says, it's going to be a flood. He's like, the Lord will save me, right? And then he goes, and he's on his roof. And the guy in the, in the rowboat comes and goes, come on, I'll save you. He goes, no, no, the Lord's going to save me. And then the helicopter comes. He's like, the Lord's going to save me. And then he dies. And then when he gets to heaven and he says to, he says to God, he's like, I thought you were going to save me. God's like, I sent you the guy, knocked down your door. I turned you the guy in a rowboat. And I sent you the guy in a helicopter. Like, there you go. So it's not always what you think it is. It's not always the people who are going to help you or the ones that you expect to help you. In fact, you're better off not expecting a particular person, but you have the positive expectation that you will be helped. You don't have to put a person, you don't have to put it in the guise of a person. You just accept the help 
uh, when being asked. So don't forget to ask. Because one thing about Taurus is you're very self-reliant. So sometimes you don't even think to ask, but um, you would do it for somebody else, right? So why wouldn't they do it for you? Let's pull a rune. Uh, manas. This is, is this Manas? Iwas. This is Iwas. Oh, shoot. Damn it. Oh, sorry. That is tile hitting glass. Okay. Didn't break anything though. Iwas. This is about movement. This is about movement. So this is saying you need to move. You need to get moving on something. It's time to move forward. It's time to move out of the grief. It's time to see the gifts that you have. It's time for you to share your gifts with others and have them share their gifts with you. It's time to communicate your needs. All right. Let's pull a ancestors card here. This is a angels, angels and ancestors or Oracle deck, Ray. Oh, shoot. Let me just put these other cards away so I'm a little messed up. All messed up. Okay. Oops. I say that a lot, don't I? Ancestors and Oracle, Ancestors and Angels, advice for Taurus. Advice for Taurus. Trader, exchange energy to create abundance. Well, isn't that interesting as Gemini sits in your second house? Okay. What a cutie, too. Look at this guy. Look at that face. I trade with this guy. Seems like a nice fella. <laughs> All right. Well, so, sometimes this amazes me how the astrology and the cards like line up with each other. Make make connections and exchange information, talents, or support. The universe operates under the law of cause and effect and is always looking to return to a natural state of balance. So if you are lacking in the feelings of abundance at the you are being invited to share your time, your gifts, and your understanding with others. If you are frustrated because something isn't unfolding in your life, instead of asking yourself what can, what, what you can get, ask yourself what you can give. The exchange of energy doesn't necessarily mean financial energy. It can also be about supporting in order to feel supported. If you have been ho uh, holding back with your offerings, now is a time to change that. Allow yourself to, to be open, honest, and vulnerable. Uh, this can prepare you to open up to even greater opportunities in the coming weeks and months. Sharing your gifts, sharing your gifts. All right, Taurus, I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you find it hopeful. Please like and subscribe if you would. Uh, a thumbs up goes a long way. A subscription goes a long way. Uh, if you subscribe, you can press the little thing that tells you that a video is up. I do astrology videos every morning from my garden, and it's a beautiful time to get into that because even if you're not into astrology, the garden is lovely, and you learn a little astrology on the way. You get to hear the 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 language she is a language that you have to like any language you hear it and you have to communicate it and the more you hear it 
and communicate it, the more you understand it. So that's always helpful. I am going to be doing a um, transit class for astrology students. These are for more, you know, it's sort of advanced students, not very advanced. You just have to know your planets and your houses and your uh, your signs and um, your aspects. You don't have to be an expert, um, but it's a good class. We talk about transits and what they are and how they affect us. Um, I'm also starting a uh, introduction to the Kabbalah. If you're interested in that, drop me an email. There'll be links below for all of this. I do do personal readings, a combination of astrology, numerology, and Kabbalah. If you're interested in that, there's links for that as well. I do have ability, so I don't know. You know, I get pretty busy, so <laughs> and it is summer, so I'm probably not going to make as many uh appointments available so if you are interested in doing that i would suggest you do it uh, sooner than later um but it's all up to you you do what you want <laughs> i'm just here to help right um what else what else what else i think that's it um have yourself a great month and i will see you again in july or i'll see you in the morning or i'll see you for my astrology or i'll see Kabbalah. whatever it is i'll see you again <laughs> You can't get rid of me. <laughs> all right. Much love to you all. Namaste.